What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's tutorial we're going to be talking about the all new precast tab in Revit and all of the tools and features that come with that. Uh, now the precast tab is available as standard on Revit 2021, uh, so that's the latest version of Revit and if you're interested about all of the new features uh, in Revit 2021 or if you're interested in downloading the student version, if you're either a student or an educator, I already have those videos up and you can take a look at them. The links are in the description. Uh, so this uh, tutorial is going to be about the precast tab. This was available earlier on uh, as a plugin, but now it's a part of the standard tool set in Revit and part of the standard ribbon in Revit 2021. Uh, now, I'm just an architect. I'm not a structural engineer, so it took me a bit longer to understand how these tools are, uh, how these tools are used. And this is just a quick overview because th just these, these tools are very complex and there are a, a ton of settings and a lot of different things that they can do with them. So it, it would take a long time to explain them in depth. So this is just going to be a quick overview of the tools. And then later on, I'll be, I'll be making a complete concrete in Revit with reinforcement and precast course, uh, which will be available where I take a more extensive look, maybe a couple of hours, just, ex uh, uh, just taking a look at all of these precast uh, tools because they are so complicated. Uh, now, I already have some courses up. I have, for example, a steel uh, structural course. It's available on my website. First, a link in the description. I've got um, many other advanced courses and I also have some beginner courses. So if you're interested, check it out, balkanarctic.com. The link is in the description. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get straight into the tutorial. Okay, so here we are in Revit 2021 and we're going to get straight into it. So let's go here to models, go to new and then uh, for the template. Now, I usually tend to go with the architectural template, the metric architectural template. But for this one, I'm going to go with the metric structural template. Uh, now, the reason why I'm going to do this is something that they found out when working with reinforcement uh, a few years ago. And that is when you're working with the structural tools, uh, if you're using the structural template, Revit tends to load in all of those uh, extra families that you need for all of those tools and settings uh, so uh, there are just some additional families like rebar shapes things like that so uh, that might be included in the structural template and it's not included in the architectural template so in order to save time for loading those in I just go with the structural template and then click OK so here we are in the structural template and if we go here to the precast tab as you can see that's where all of the precast tools are located. Now the precast tab is new in Revit 2021 it's between the steel and the systems tabs and here we have uh, the basic tools that were available earlier with the precast plugin uh, which is now standard in Revit 2021 and those are the split, uh, the mounting parts, reinforcements, uh, shop drawings, configuration and so on. Uh, now, in order to test this out, we have to, well, add some elements here. Uh, so in order to, uh, to add some elements, what I'm going to do is flip over here to the structure tab. Now, something to note is that when you're working with the precast uh, tools, you can only uh, use them and apply changes uh, to uh, structural elements. So only structural walls and structural floors will apply. If you're using anything else, it's not going to work. You can't use architectural uh, walls and architectural floors. So stick with these structure tools. Okay, so I'm just going to go here to the wall command and here we're at level two, so let's switch down to level one. Uh, if you're using the structural uh, template, uh, you, usually Revit tends to default to rev uh, level two for some reason. So let's just jump down to level one. Let's go to wall and make sure to go to structural wall. There we go. Uh, now for this wall, I'm going to set it to the generic 300 millimeter type. Uh, for the base constraint, let's go with level 1 without any offset. And then for the top constraint, let's go with unconnected and let's give it 8000 millimeters. Perfect. And now let's add a wall segment over here, just like that. Hit the escape key a couple of times and there we go. Okay, so once we have this wall segment, let's add an additional floor segment. So let's go here to structural uh, floors and uh, let's uh, let's go with the generic 300 millimeter type and let's create a simple rectangle. Oops, like that. There we go. 
adjust it here perfect hit finish and we can go into the 3d view just to see what we have created uh, now I like to turn this to hidden aligned view I think it looks a bit better so there we go we have some elements here we can turn on shadows if you want and now let's start playing around with all of the new precast tools so let's go here to the precast tab and the first tool and the most important one that you're going to be using is the split tool so what you basically have to do is just go here to the split tool uh, first it's going to synchronize some families to the project so you have to wait for that uh, but once it does that for the first time uh, it's uh, just going to have that so you don't have to uh, resynchronize every time you use this tool so just the first time you click on it it's going to start this process it takes maybe uh, a minute or less so it's it's not that terrible but you will have to uh, wait for a while until it's until it's done okay so now that Revit is finished uh, synchronizing we can finally use the tool so here on the uh, kind of on the modified tab or here uh, below on this uh, line below the ribbon uh, we have a few options so we can cancel out of the command uh, we can go to finish and here we have the option to uh, select multiple so when you click here as you can see you can select or remove from selection just all of the uh, included elements here if it's checked uh, at multiple you can select multiple elements and of course if you uncheck that it's just going to select uh, one element so that's quite straightforward okay so once you're done with your selection you just go here to finish and then uh, here it asks us which type of a f which floor type do we want to use uh, the hollow core slab the solid slab and the uh, girder slab so let's just go with the solid slab for now and click OK there we go it is going to add the uh, the a, a warning here for the lifters that's okay let's just click OK and exit out of that okay so that's uh, what we have as you can see this whole model has been split into different segments uh, now before I continue explaining how does this work and uh, how to change the settings which are going to change the dimensions of these uh, segments there is just one thing that I would like to mention and that uh, takes the visibility into consideration so when Revit divides these walls into their like precast uh, prefabricated elements uh, it does so uh, in a way uh, where it's using parts so basically this wall is divided into parts now um, if you take a look at it or if we hover over the edge of the wall hit the tab key a couple of times as you can see we have the ability to select the original wall itself or we can select the individual assemblies inside of that wall uh, now if you don't want to take a look at all of those assemblies if you find that unnecessary you can always go here to the properties and for that view uh, change the parts visibility from show both to show parts hit apply and now it's going to preview everything a little bit better so you can see it a bit easier here we have all of those mounting points uh, those uh, uh, the, the the holes between the walls here as you can see this is the connection and so on uh, now when you change this to parts in the 3d view it's going to work perfect but uh, when you switch to level 1 and as you can see here we can see all of those elements but if we switch to show parts and hit apply and now in this case it works but it might not uh, be visible uh, your parts might disappear uh, now if I go here to view properties and scroll down a little bit to uh, view range uh, here uh, the view range should be set to uh, either unlimited or level below but if you set it to level 1 which is usually what it's set up to and hit apply as you can see those disappear now if it was a floor it would be visible but if there are parts they disappear so in order to view parts in a floor plan view you have to set this to unlimited or a level below okay so with all of that set up let's go back into the 3d view okay now let's take a look at what determines uh, the size of these uh, parts and all of the separation so all of these uh, all of these tools that are available here on the precast tab they can be configured uh, in order to set up what they actually do 
uh, and all of those settings are made well yes you guessed it on the configuration button so let me move this out of the way just a little bit over here to the kind of edge of the screen and then let's open up the configuration panel so the configuration panel looks like this and I can't make it smaller okay Never mind. So as you can see here, we have the precast menu and then that uh, explodes into a concrete menu and then we have walls and slabs and built-in parts. So for each of these, we can set up the parts, the you know, we can set up the segments and so on and so forth. So for example, in this case, we have a solid wall. Now, as you can see here, the length of each segment is quite large. So what you can do is go here to solid wall, go to segmentation, and here, as you can see, the uh, max wall length is set to 8,000. So that's 8,000 millimeters. And then also we have some other settings. So if I decide to change this from 8,000 to something like 4,000 and click OK. And let's go back a few steps. And let's just double check the configuration just to make sure that everything is set up. So yeah. Uh, the max wall length is set to 4000. Let's click OK. OK, so now if we go here to uh, to split and select that wall and hit finish. Let's wait for a second. As you can see, now it's split in smaller segments. Uh, now for this uh, floor here, uh, as you remember, when we went to split this, so let's go to split, split this floor, hit finish. Let's go with the solid slab again. Now, as you can see, it's uh, going in this direction. So this is the span direction of this particular floor. Uh, now, this can be affected uh, previously. So if I go back, select the floor itself, and then go into Edit Boundary. So as you can see, the span direction is set at this line here. Now, if I go to span direction, go use pick lines and pick this line. So the span direction should be going like this. Now, if I hit finish, select that slab and go to precast, split, solid slab, there we go. Okay, now as you can see, it's going in the other direction. So uh, basically, that's, uh, that span direction is going to determine in which way the, uh, the, the whole segments are facing. Uh, now, the next thing that I would like to show you is what to do in order to have a hollow floor uh, segment. So if I were to go to back to structure, to floor, and then create another floor here, just like that, hit finish, there we go. Okay, so for this floor, uh, if I were to go to precast and then to split, and then instead of a solid slab, let's go with hollow core slab, that's the one that has kind of round voids uh, running uh, down the length of it, and if I click OK, it's going to give us an error warning saying that the thickness of the slab isn't correct. So for this particular uh, slab, this is something that's in the that slab void family, and it just doesn't work with the 300 millimeter type. So I'm just going to select that slab and go here into edit type and go to duplicate. And let's create a 200 millimeter slab. Click OK, go to structure and change its thickness to 200 millimeter, click OK again. And now let's just select it and go to precast to split hollow core slab, click OK. And as you can see, it's currently showing us a warning. So let's cancel out of that. Uh, now this might be for a variety of reasons. In this case, I think it's that the length is a bit too long for this. So let's try again. I changed it, made it a bit shorter, at least in this direction, in the span direction. So now let's go back to precast, go into split hollow core slab. And as you can see, now it's doing its magic. Okay. And there we go. We have our uh, hollow core uh, slab, uh, hollow core slab floor. Uh, now again, I'm just going to show, change the parts visibility to show parts. And this will only show the the slab, as you can see, it's if I change this maybe to shaded. As you can see now, it's hollow in the middle. We have these here uh, segments and so on. So it does look pretty 
good let's go back into hidden line so this is how you can create these uh, these singular elements uh, now another thing that I would like to show you is how to create a wall that's not just a solid wall but it's actually a hollow wall so it's made out of two uh, two pieces and then in between we can have air or some so sort of thermal insulation so to create a wall like that I'm just going to go here to structure go to wall and then uh, let's start off with either one of these. Let's start off with this one. Uh, go into duplicate type. And uh, now for this wall, let's just duplicate it. Let's click OK and then I'll readjust the name uh, later on. Uh, so I'm going to go here into edit uh, and I'm just going to change the thickness of the structural uh, part to 70 millimeters. Select the whole layer, go to insert and click it two times to get three layers. Uh, and then the uh, the thickness of the final one will be 70 millimeters as well and the middle one uh, it will be a thermal air layer and of course the material will be air let's just search for air there we go now for these ones uh, let's just go with precast so let's search for precast do we have something here there we go so precast and I can just do the same thing for this one, precast concrete, uh, click, uh, okay, for the air layer, yeah, for that one, let's go with 120, click OK. So that's the total of 260 millimeters, so let's just rename this type to 260 millimeters, click OK. OK again, and let's place that wall. Uh, now, for these walls that are hollow in the middle, uh, unfortunately, you can't split it by the height. So they can only go from level 1 up to level 2. So they can only be kind of a short height going between two, uh, two levels, but that's OK. Uh, so here for uh, level 1, the base offset is 0, up to level 2 with no top offset. OK, I don't know why it's doing this. Click apply. Okay, this is really annoying. Let's set this to height. There we go. From level one up to level two, apply. Okay, finally it's working. So this is that wall segment. We can make it smaller or longer if necessary. Uh, now for this wall, uh, as you can see, if I switch it to realistic, it should show Okay, it doesn't yet, but it will show later on, but we have that uh, empty uh, part, hollow part in the middle. Now, just to make it a bit more interesting, let's go to architecture, let's add a door somewhere on this wall like that. So this is just a simple opening. Let's go to window again. It's just a window opening. Let's go with this one. Now, I'm not going to place it on the ground. I'm just going to go up until we get that, if you can see it, that blue dashed line and click so as you can see that kind of snaps the the window a bit uh, higher up now uh, you won't be able to change the position of these uh, doors and windows because you can't select them and or these are actually just openings not actual windows and the reason for that is if you go here to the VG overrides or the visibility graphics overrides and go into edit uh, if you scroll down and search for doors as you can see they're turned off so we have to turn both doors and windows on and hit apply okay in case you want to edit their position or or something uh, like that so just keep that in mind but never mind we're here for the precast tab so let's select this thing uh, go to precast and go into split wait for a few moments and there we go so now it's not that impressive it's just a simple split here on this side and then we have that hollow part in the middle that's quite quite all right and quite boring now let's add reinforcement so for the uh, precast tab we have the option to add reinforcement we also have the option for mounting parts but I'm going to skip that because in most cases as you can see from this wall it has all of those mounting parts so it's not going to be something that you have to kind of think about it's usually done automatically so we can just skip that and go straight here into reinforcement so I'm just going to go to reinforcement here you can select the elements I'm just going to select this whole assembly hit finish 
Now it's asking us what do we want to use. So here uh, I'm just going to use the uh, the reinforcement ty uh, type rebar double wall number two and then we have the option for corners so uh, the corner bars uh, you can edit those so let's just click OK and then it's going to add rebar into our wall now of course it is going to give us a few errors along the way where it finds some some problematic spots but at the end it's going to give us the whole wall with even these kind of a hanging parts at, at the top where you can kind of hang the, the wall and so on. Uh, now all of this rebar can be set up in the configuration uh, panel of course. Uh, so here we can find reinforcement for regular walls. We have double walls so we can find uh, reinforcement there as well. So you can just go here and play around with some of the settings. So uh, for example for a regular wall we have uh, either rebar two layers of, or fabric two or one layers. So, uh, and here we have the edge reinforcements. So basically for each one, you go into edit and then you have all of the settings. So uh, as you can see here, it says steel bar, position is inside, you have the cover offset if you need it. Uh, usually you are going to add some sort of a cover offset. Then we have the rebar area inside. So as you can see here, we have the rebar type, which is 10 millimeter, uh, maximum distance 100 millimeters. So basically all of the settings that you can set up for your regular wall segment uh, in the uh, in, in the structure tab you have all of those but they're set up like this like some sort of presets and then you just apply them uh, when applying uh, rebar to your shapes so again if I select this wall and go to precast go to reinforcement as you can see here we have that uh, rebar two layers rebar one layer fabric and so on so we can go here with maybe two layers click OK and that's going to apply exactly that rebar that we've just taken a look at uh, now also if I just go back here yeah so uh, we have the uh, edge configuration now if you're not sure what that's referring to uh, here as you can see we have the uh, you can it gets a little image that shows like previews of what it's referring to and you can play around with the number of layers overlapping length and so on and you can change the types uh, as well so let's cancel out of all of this Okay, moving on, uh, one thing when it comes to this uh, rebar uh, is uh, let's talk about viewing it. So if you want to preview it uh, and maybe just in order to see it a bit better uh, in this front view, for example, what you can always do is uh, go and maybe either you go to graphic display options, let's cancel out of this, and turn on the transparency okay now as you can see we can see the rebar uh, below but again this is just going to preview rebar as simple line work uh, now what you can do is uh, make like a cross selection go into filter uh, go with check none and then just check the structural rebar hit apply okay and then you have the options here in the properties somewhere yeah uh, view, visi view, view visibility states uh, go into edit and just make sure to check both here for the 3D view. Check both of these uh, with view as solid. Uh, these are the only two that you can, you have to check. Click OK. And then if you zoom in and switch this to fine level of detail, it will preview that in, uh, in 3D. So as you can see, it even adds some rusty uh, iron color, which is really cool, but that's only for the realistic view. So it does tend to look really cool. So as you can see, that's what it looks like when it's in 3D, and this is what it looks like when it's in 2D. So there is quite quite a difference. Okay, moving on. This is not only here to to make things look cool. Uh, of course, there are a lot of really cool functions. So for example, one of those uh, that I would like to mention is the shop drawings option. So this is really amazing. So you have the option to set up shop drawings. Let's go back here into configuration just to view the configuration for those. So here, uh, for example, for the double wall, which we have here, we have shop drawings and you can set up both the uh, template so let's set it up to a3 for example you have the option to set up the center of gravity even the dimension type and then also some uh, additional settings click OK and then you can go here to shop drawings select a whole assembly like this wall here hit finish 
wait for a few moments and then Revit will basically produce all necessary shop drawings for this. So it's basically building project documentation for you. Uh, you don't have to kind of go to that repetitive task uh, one by one. So here, as you can see, we have this uh, we have the double wall rebar uh, list. So this is the list of all rebar, but here we actually have another sheet. So as you can see here, we have our wall and we have one side, we have the other side here. Uh, here we have the, the floor plan view and here we have the, the section view. And also we have a couple of these uh, tables, maybe move this one here, this one here, maybe that will leave enough room. Almost. Maybe if we break it in half. Oops. So it is kind of hard to place this exactly how you want it, but as you can see, we can kind of fit it on screen, which is really cool. Okay, so as you can see here, we have an A3 sheet of paper with all of our project documentation. And uh, for all of these views here, if we go to the project browser, we can't really find those views. So basically Revit produces all of these views and you can edit them, of course, just by double clicking in the view itself. Maybe change the level of detail to fine, double click outside. And now if you zoom in here, as you can see, we have double lines for rebar here, which we don't have in this view here. So that's something that you can play around with. But as you can see, we get all of the dimensions, everything, the tables, everything is just uh, ready to go. So uh, I think this is quite amazing that Revit can kind of produce all of the all the necessary project documentation. Uh, again, as I showed you there in the configuration, everything is quite customizable, which is uh, another really cool option because you don't have to go through that trouble on your own, or uh, or you you don't you you can. Uh, basically set everything up exactly how you want it so you don't have to go through all the trouble of setting each view independently which is amazing and uh, now again as i said uh, uh, check out all of my courses on balkanarchitect.com i have a complete uh, steel structural course uh, st st steel structural fabrications so check that out it's going to be the first link in the description and if you're interested in having a course that's on concrete and reinforcement, like a whole long course, like five hours or something like that, that includes uh, an in-depth explanation of the precast uh, tab, well then tell me in the comment section below and I'll get, uh, get right on that course. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this uh, little overview of all of the tools. It's quite a complicated tool set, so I, uh, this is just barely scratching the surface, but I hope you have learned something new. Okay, so that's pretty much it for uh, this uh, quick tutorial, if I can call it that way. Thank you for watching, please subscribe, like and share this video, and I'll see you with another tutorial in a couple of days. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.